tonight's it is a free exhibition. Champ Starbuck, number one contender for the heavyweight championship, and it's free, free, free. Yes, sir, went up to $1,000 in gold. The champ will meet all comers. Oh, uh, Sonny, Dad, over here with you. Thanks. $100 given away to any man who can stay in the ring with the champion for one round. Three minutes. $1,000 to the man who can beat him. Yes, sir, gents. Now, here's a chance for you to make a little extra change. You, you there. You look like a man that ought to be able to handle himself. Where's this champ of yours, mister? Well, he'll be here this afternoon. Tell me, what do you weigh, mister? 215, uh, that's before dinner. About 225 after. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, Mr. The Champ only weighs 190 pounds. Now, I'm sure you wouldn't want to fight a man that much lighter than you, would you? For $1,000? Why, I'd fight one of my own mules for that. <laughs> <laughs> Your man better be here, like you say. Of course, of course. He'll be here, all right. <laughs> Hey, mister, is all that free? I mean, trying for that hundred dollars and everything? Why, certainly, Sonny, the exhibition is free, and it'll only cost ten dollars to try for the big money. <laughs> See you all later this afternoon. I'll be there. <laughs> you better save your money, young fella. That man's a professional boxer. Oh, well, I don't expect to beat him. I just thought maybe I could stay out of his way for three minutes. That's not so long. That's long enough to get disfigured for life. Take Marshal Earp's advice and forget it. I've seen that man fight. Well, I'd like to try it. You say you, uh, you've seen this fella Starbuck fight? Yeah, in Wichita last year. He's good. Strong as a bull and fast. Yeah. Seems like a strange way to make a living. Yeah, he makes a good one, too. I saw him take on 19 men in two hours. Not one of them lasted the three minutes. See, that's $190, plus whatever his manager won, covering bets. Hey, Bars. Yeah. That's Herb, the tall, black-haired one. All right. You think your fighter can handle him? Oh, now, please, Mr. Moresby, let's not joke, huh? Champ will break him in two. I hope. <laughs> yes, sir, for what you're paying us, we can bust him up pretty good. All right. Hundred and seventy two, hundred and seventy three at most. And Mosby sure hates him. I don't know why. Come on, get up. Wake up. You can't sleep all day. You got work to do. Come on, get up. Wake up. I'm hungry. Yeah, you look half starved. Hey, did you ever run into that fellow, what's his name, Moresby? Yeah. And the man Moresby wants flattened is the town marshal. Frank, you got a short memory. You remember that deputy up in Mabilene? He come looking for us with a gun. Yes, but this isn't just a deputy. This is Wyatt Earp himself. From the way I hear it, if we beat him uh, fair and square, he ain't gonna come after you with no gun. And from the way I hear it, he's pretty handy with his fist. <laughs> When you get through with him, he won't even have enough strength to lift a gun. Besides, if we bust him up pretty good, we get a bonus. How much? 300. How much? All right, all right, 500. 500. Frank, the trouble with you is you ain't honest. Look, I don't want you using those knucks on anybody but Wyatt Earp. Too many broken jaws around here, and he'll get suspicious. Come on, come on, give them to me. All right. Now get dressed. I'm going over the saloon. Hey, look at that. Oh, he's sending him. Pounds. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Look at that. Look at that. He won't make it. I bet he don't make it. Oh, you won't make it. three dollars more. Maybe I'll earn that at the livery stable. trying to do scare everybody away. Well, the big slob made me mad. Well, you can't afford to lose your temper. Hey, Boris. What about the marshal? What about Marshal Earp? Yeah. Marshal's got more important things to do. Come on, Wyatt. We've got to finish our work. Then, wait a minute, wait a minute. Our job's not that important. Anyway, all the action's here today. Wyatt, please, don't get into the ring with him. He'll ruin you. Look, I'm not exactly a stranger to the manly art, you know. Wyatt, I'm telling you, the man's a professional. Well, maybe the $10 fee's too much for the marshal. I'll tell you what, marshal. The champ will waive the fee, just to show you he's a good sport. There you are, marshal. How do you like it? Not the money. Herp won't fight unless he knows he can win. Why, listen to me. You aren't so conceited that you have to accept every challenge you get. Is getting into that ring part of your job? Let's go. What are we going to do now, boss? Have to try again.
You're going to stay another day, aren't you? What for? Only took in $40, including the bets I covered. And he's eating up most of that right now. I'll give you an extra 100 if you'll stay one more day. Whether I work or not? Yes. Except that you've got to agree to meet Herb, if we can get him to do it. And how are you going to do that? The man just won't fight? You haven't used the right approach. You've got to invite him into the ring in front of the whole town. Then if he refuses, you call him yellow right to his face. Yeah, sure. I've seen men get shot for a lot less than that. Not by Earp, you haven't. He won't shoot an unarmed man. Does that $500 bonus still stand? Of course. Hey, you! Bring me another one of these steaks! Good morning, Marshal. Good morning. Well, it sounds like you're enjoying your work this morning. <laughs> well, it's not only the work. I'll soon have enough money to fight the champ. Oh, is he still here in town? Yes, sir. Uh, you know, uh, what Sheriff Masterson said to you yesterday was good advice. This fellow's a professional, and he could, well, he could really hurt you badly. Well, if I tried to beat him, yes, sir, but... Well, I've made a little study of boxing, and I think I can stay out of his way for at least one round. Now, I need the money. I'd like to get back home. <laughs> Well, you don't like it here in Kansas, huh? <laughs> no, it's not that, sir. It's just that, well, my family's in New York, and well, I was on my way out to California, but things just didn't work out. Oh. Well, look, I uh, can lend you enough money to get home, then you wouldn't have to fight in the... Oh, no, thank you, Marshal. I appreciate that very much, but, well, it's more than just the money. Oh? Well, I'm interested in professional boxing myself, and, well, this would be the best experience I could get. Especially if I could win some money to boot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wish you a lot of luck. Thank you, sir. Is he here yet? Not yet. We better get started, make it look right. All right. Well, good afternoon, good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> I see plenty of seats, so make yourself all comfortable. Now, I see a lot of familiar faces here, so there's no reason for my going into great detail. Just want to know who's going to be the first man to challenge the champ. Now, as you know, for every round you stay with them, there's $100 in United States currency. And there is $1,000 in... I'll try it, mister. Here's the money. Oh, now, aren't you a little bit young for this sort of thing, Sonny? Come on back next summer. We'll be here again. I'm ready now. Your sign said all comers. The kid's right. Give him a chance. Yeah. All right, all right. We have the ten, Sonny. You asked for it. Here are your gloves. Now go on over in your corner. There it is, right over there. You're making a mistake. He's going to hurt you real bad. I'm going to fight him, sir. All right. Keep away from him as long as you can. And stick that left hand out in front of you. You might be able to last three minutes at that. Yes, sir. He's on. All right, now just give him some of the regular show for a couple of minutes and then drop him. You don't have to hurt him too bad. How you doing over there? Ready. Go. Come on, champ. Show that smart kid. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on.
Three minutes up. Boy, I thought you might be able to do it at that. Come on, we'll get these things done. No, on. I'm not quitting. You won the hundred dollars. I'm trying for the thousand. I might be able to beat him. Okay. What's the matter with you anyway? He's too fast. He can't hurt me, but he's too fast. All right. All right, then we've got to use these. Oh, we're not made of money. They've already cost us a hundred. Start some action. All right, I got some betting money here. Anybody like that kid? I'm still betting on Starbuck. What do you say? I got you, Mr. Right over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got him. What do you say? Right over here, Mr. You ready, son? Let's go. Ready, Jack? Come on. 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 Come on
to miss the best part. I told you everyone was going to get carried out of here. You carry him out. And don't even show your face in this town again, either of you. All right, all right, Marshal. Hey, just a minute. It's a matter of $100 to that boy who stood around with your ex-champ. We better get out of here. All right, that's all I got. Better collect the rest from Moresby. Promised us 500 bucks if we chop you up. Moresby! Come on, Jim. I need sixty-five dollars from you. Thank you, Mr. Moresby. Now, the next time you feel I need a beating, I hope you'll try it yourself. I'll be happy to accommodate you. Now, in the meantime, I suggest you make your headquarters in some other city. How do you feel? Oh, not too bad. Doc McCarty said I cracked one of my ribs. <laughs> He's got me so taped up I can hardly breathe. <laughs> well, say, here's the, uh, here's the money you want. Oh, thanks very much, sir. Sheriff Masterson was telling me about your fight. I sure wish I could have seen it. Well, it's a lot of fun while it lasted. I'll have to admit that. Well, now you know how I feel about fighting and why I want to be a professional. Yeah, I guess I do. Well, I wish you a lot of luck. I hope I'll be hearing a lot about you someday. You will, Mr. Herb. Well, thanks again for everything. Well, say, by the way, if I'm going to be uh, following your career, I don't know who you are. Just occurs to me I never did get your name. Oh, well, Fitzsimmons, sir. Bob Fitzsimmons. Well, thanks again. It was nice to have known you both. Lou, if you got any sense at all, you'll get some rest. I... I can't sleep. You better. We better save our strength for tomorrow. I'll have plenty. Right after they holler lunch. You get this pain, see? And no need to go over it anymore, Lou. I'll handle my end of it. Relax. I won't be relaxed until I've settled up with the skunk that put me in here. You've been talking about this Wyatt Earp and what you're going to do to him for years. So where do you think will be the first place they look for you? Dodge City, that's where. Let them look. Maybe they'll even find me. But not till I've paid Earp what I owe him. Ah. Afternoon, Mr. Hogan. Oh, Marshal. How are things? Oh, real quiet, Marshal. Uh, Marshal, I've been meaning to ask you if... If you uh... could, uh, take over the night shift, Mr. Hogan? Yes, sir. Pretty soon, pretty soon. Is it always so quiet, Marshal? No, not always, but uh, this is the way I like it. And you will too before too long. <laughs> hey, you're about to lose a button there. Mm, yeah. Yeah, thank you. You know, one of these days, uh, somebody's going to invent a button that won't come off. <laughs> Any interesting mail? Uh, usual stuff. Nothing urgent. Uh. Well, you're off duty. And it's a nice Saturday afternoon. Hell and I can handle it. Say, hadn't I heard something about you and that pretty young widow? What's her name? Uh, uh, well, it's only wishful thinking, Marshal. I, I can hardly get her to talk to me. <laughs> well, maybe you're, uh, maybe you're using the wrong approach, huh? Maybe. Well, I'm not alone. Evidently, every other bachelor in Dodge is using the wrong approach, too. <laughs> Marshal, this just came in for you. Thank you, Mr. Rankin, but there's no need for such haste. Read it, Marshal. All right, all right, but just sit down and rest yourself. I can't. i got to get back to the telegraph. Something bad, Marshal? No, a fellow by the name of Lou Dundee just escaped from a road gang. 
Warden says he's positive Dundee's headed for Dodge City. Says he's after you. Maybe. Uh, Mr. Ogan, after you're a lawman for a while, you'll find out you just can't help making enemies. Well, you put more lawbreakers in jail than the others. Well, I prefer that to killing them. Yes, sir. Marshal, this man Dundee, he's... Uh... If he hasn't changed since I sent him to prison and comes here, I'll send him back. Yes, sir. Afternoon, Marshal. Afternoon, Mr. Hogan. Good afternoon. I'll be with you in a moment, sir. Thank you. No hurry. Well, Mr. Hogan, looks like you have the same problem I have. It must, uh, must be an occupational disease, hmm? There yes. you are, Mr. Hogan. That's the fourth one this week. <laughs> thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Miss Phillips. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Marshal. Is there something I can help you with, Marshal? Yes, ma'am, I think there is. Another button? <laughs> I'm afraid so. I declare, in the short time I've been in Dodge City, I've seen more buttons come loose than I believed was possible. Well, I, uh, I think I can understand it, Mrs. Phillips. Would you take off your coat, please, Mr. Earp? Hmm? Oh, sure. Sorry. Oh, it's, uh, here it is, right there. Mm-hmm. This button's been sewn on before, I see. Yeah, I'm afraid so, and, uh, by an amateur. You? Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm, uh, well, I'm a bachelor, you know. Yes, I know. Excuse me. <laughs> My hand seems a bit unsteady today. Well, maybe you're tired. Maybe. Hmm. There you go. Are you, uh, you planning to make Dodge City your home, Mrs. Phillips? Well, I haven't decided yet, Mr. Earp. My husband spoke so often about going west. Well, I can understand how he felt. I'm sorry Mr. Phillips didn't live to see his dreams come true. So am I. Thank you. He was a good, kind man. Almost like a father to me. Quite a bit older than I, but a wonderful gentleman. There you are, Marshal. Oh. Thank you very much. That was quick. Uh-huh. Oh, you have a thread hanging. Well, that's all right. I can fix it. Just hold still. There now. That'll stay put for a good long time. I'm sure it will. Uh, Mrs. Phillips, I'd like to... Uh, to able... pay me for it? Oh, for one little button. Somebody performs a service, you ought to. Uh, well, well, think of it as a favor from one friend to another. Well, thank you kindly, ma'am. You're welcome. Of course, if your lady friend should require any dressmaking, you might mention my name. I'm all alone, Mrs. Phillips. Oh, I know how you feel. Being all alone, too. It's kind of an unhappy state. Uh, I'd be honored to be allowed to do something about it, Mrs. Phillips. I'd... I'd like to think about that, Mr. Earp. I'd like you to think about it. 
Good day, ma'am. Good day. Howdy, Mr. Burns. How are the children? Fine, thank you. Yeah. You know, it's a nice quiet day. Quiet the Saturday I've seen in a long while. Say, did your deputy catch up with you yet? Hell, no one. He came busting here three or four times looking for you. He did. I, well, I, I'll just sit around here and wait for him. Then say, could I trouble you for a cup of coffee? No trouble. Sit right down, Marshal. Thank you. Quiet. You know, that prisoner that escaped yesterday, Dundee, we got a telegram about him from Wichita. He, he broke into a store, stole a couple of guns, pistol whipped the livery stable man and stole a horse. Uh, identify him as Dundee positively? Well, the livery stable man's about 80% sure. Mm. He may be here right now. Oh, thank you, Mr. Burns. Look, Wyatt, I found Hogan. I put him back on duty. I think we ought to put on at least two or three extra deputies. I'll just take it easy. You do that and rumors are going to start flying all over town. This is good coffee. Please let me put on a couple of extra men, just in case. All right, if it'll make you feel better. Oh, it will. Just keep it very quiet, huh? I wish you had the good sense to get a little frightened once in a while. Marshal. Mrs. Phillips, what are you doing out on the street at this hour? Oh, just getting a breath of air. Is something wrong, Marshal? Well, do you know what time it is? Oh, somewhere around midnight. I couldn't sleep. I didn't think I'd disturb anyone. I'm sorry. Well, I'll walk you home. Where are you staying, over at the Dodge House? Yes, sir. Come on. I said I was sorry. You're still angry with me, aren't you? Well, I'm trying to be, but... Uh... It isn't easy. Ha <laughs> good. I'm sure you haven't got any enemies, but well, this is still the West, and uh, unfortunately, there is still some bad people. Are you looking for one now? <laughs> well, you never can tell. Now, why don't you go upstairs and try and get some sleep, huh? All right. Oh, I, um, I thought it over, what you said. I beg your pardon? About it not being a good thing, my being alone. Tonight proves that. Well, I've decided to let you do something about it, like you asked. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, if it's all right with you, I'll, I'll call on you tomorrow evening. Well, I was thinking about tomorrow afternoon, right after church. It would be a lovely day for a picnic Mrs. and... Mrs. Phillips, I think... My you... name is Barbara. May I call you Wyatt? I'd be honored. Now, I think you ought to go inside. What about the picnic? Sounds fine. I'll expect you tomorrow afternoon at one. Good night, Wyatt. Good night, ma'am. Uh, Barbara. Barbara? You've all seen this picture. You sure you'll recognize it? I'm sure. Pick out a spot in the main road from Wichita. Hole up there where you can't be seen and... Well. Good morning, morning. gentlemen. Good morning, Good morning. Marshal. Uh, did you two get any sleep? I napped a little. Oh, I'm, I'm not tired, Marshal. Oh, good. Maybe you'll, uh, maybe you'll do a big favor for me, Mr. Hogan. Oh, I'd be glad to. I, um... Uh, I made an appointment with our mutual acquaintance to, uh, well, the company are on a picnic today, and I, well, I won't be able to make it, and I was wondering if you'd substitute for me. Oh, uh, well, Marshal, uh, come to think of it, I, I guess I am kind of tired. I, I don't think I'd be very good company for Miss Phillips. Uh, Sam? Uh, no, don't look at me, Marshal. I'm married. So is Bob. Look, you go on duty at 4 o'clock. Nothing's going to happen while you're away. Hmm. Just to make sure of that, you, uh, you stay on duty yourself and put on a couple extra deputies. Huh? No, I'll... Uh... I'll get it. Hello, Mrs. Phillips, ma'am. 
Hello, Mr. Hogan. Is the marshal inside? Uh, yes, ma'am. I'll, I'll get him. Thank you. Marshal. All right. It's one o'clock, Wyatt. So it is, Barbara. I, uh, I was just on my way over to see you. Thought I'd save you the trouble. Lunch is all packed and it's a beautiful day. Barbara, I'm very sorry, but I'm... I'm not going to be able to go with you today. But you promised. Well, I know I did, but... Well, something came up and I can't leave town. Maybe next week. Hmm? I was looking forward so much to this afternoon, I... Oh, don't cry, please. I beg your pardon, Wyatt. But uh, I think we can take care of any emergencies that might come up while you're away. Maybe you're right, huh? Come on. We'll be over in the Grove if you need me. Right. See you later. Come on, boy. some help from the hotel. Oh. You know, that hotel never made a pie like this. I'm glad you enjoyed it, Wyatt. Here, I'll give you a hand. No, this is a woman's job. Now, I want to know all about Wyatt Earp. Not the Marshal of Dodge City. I can read about him in the papers. Well, he's the only one I know. No, he isn't. I want to know where you came from. What kind of a boy you were? Well, you're kind of curious, aren't you? I'm interested. Well, I was born in Monmouth, Illinois. When I was 16, we all moved out to California and settled in San Bernardino. Came by wagon train. Did you love your parents? Were you close to them? I loved them very much. We had a good home life. Mom and Dad, my two sisters, Jim, Morgan, Virgil, Newton, those are my brothers. We had just about the right mixture of uh, family discipline and young male independence, I'd say. How about you, Barbara? Well, what young life I had was wonderful. I didn't have very much, though. Both my parents died before I was 15. I'm sorry. My father was a horse trader. I had a pony of my own, and now they're both dead. You've had a lot of shock for someone so young. Believe me, these things take time, but you get over them. You know, something you, you're too beautiful to be sad. I know you can smile because I've seen you. It's just about the prettiest sight I ever saw. Do you really think I'm beautiful? Very. Then why don't you hold me? Barbara. Stand up. I'm going to kill you. But first, I want you to know why. Stand perfectly still and keep your hand away from your gun. 
I wouldn't use it on you anyway. I'm not a widow. I've never been married. My name is not Phillips. It's Clements. Does that name mean anything to you? You killed my father. I've known a lot of men by the name of Clements, but I've never killed any of them. You sent them to prison. That's the same as killing if they're innocent. I don't decide a man's innocence or guilt. That's up to a judge and jury. My father's name is Martin Clements. I remember him. I caught him in the act of robbing the Wichita Bank. You're lying. The Clements family had a bad name, so you saw your chance when my father went to Wichita. He was a cattleman. He was in the bank making a deposit, and you wounded him. You sent him to prison for ten years, and it killed him. An innocent man. He died in less than four years. Miss Clements, I'm going to have to tell you the truth about your father. He was a cattleman in a sense, but he was a rustler too, among other things. He and four others were robbing the bank when I saw him. I wounded him, yes, because he was shooting at me. I could have killed him, but I didn't. You're lying to try to save your life, but it won't work. I'm telling the truth to try and save my life and to try to keep you from being a murderess. Nobody will suspect me. I'll say somebody shot you from hiding. All right. Get it over with. Turn around. No. I want to see it when it happens. Turn around, I said! I can't do it. I can't. It's all right, miss. There's somebody here who can. Mr. Dundee, isn't it? That's right. Move out of the line of fire, miss. Go on. Put down that gun, Mr. Dundee. You're not a killer. You're wrong there. I wasn't before you sent me up, but I am now. Can I talk to you for a minute? Go ahead. I'd like to hear you begging. I'm not begging, Mr. Dundee. I just want to tell you a little bit about shooting. Now, in a few seconds, if you don't drop that gun, I'm going to jump. You don't know which way I'm going to go, so you'll probably miss. At least your first shot isn't going to kill me. In the meantime, I'm going to be shooting at you, Mr. Dundee, and I'm not bluffing. I won't miss. I've waited too many years to miss. For three years, eight months, and 17 days, I've waited for this minute. <laughs> You're going to have to kill me this time. I ain't never going back to that. You all right, Miss Clements? Dundee! Is he dead? No. I want to use your horse, Mr. Hogan. Dundee's horse is probably in the bushes someplace. I'd appreciate it if you'd drive Miss... Mrs. Phillips back to town. I'll pack the prisoner in. Sure, Marshal. You and Miss Phillips, you're all right. Yes, thank you. Here's your gun, Miss Phillips. I'm glad you didn't have to use it. You mean she tried to? She helped you? If she hadn't distracted Mr. Dundee, I'd probably be dead by now. tell you, I mean, uh, I don't seem to be able to find the words. Well, it's not necessary to say anything. I, uh, I 
think I know what you what you feel. I don't know what I feel about you. I don't know whether I hate you or my father. You were telling me the truth. But he was still my father. And I loved him very much. I know. Maybe we'll meet again someday, somewhere. And if we do, I hope we both will have forgotten all of this. I mean, I'm sorry. Well, I, I've already forgotten it, most of it. Some things I'd like to remember. Goodbye, Wyatt. Goodbye, Barbara. I see. A nice trick if you got away with it, Herb. Remember, this man dies if you don't stay put. All right, close the door. Get back up there. He was between 35 and 40. Uh, brown eyes. Black vest and light shirt. Uh, he was wearing two guns with white handles. Uh, oh, initials on the handles. They, it looked like three H's. And his horse, uh, well, he was uh, a sort of a buckskin. Well, that's a very good description. Now, tell me what happened. Well, uh, we were riding along, and all of a sudden, from nowhere... Don't worry. Right on the ground, both of you. Now listen, mister. All I've got in the world is in my pocket. You ain't going to take that. Shut up and stand still. You, come here. Please, I'm not a well man. Bullet won't make you any healthier. Come here. Well, well, you're watching chain. Got any other jewelry? Rings? Stick pin? No. That's all I've got. All right. Get back in. Both of you. You too, my friend. You mean you ain't gonna... Rob you? Why should I? Only take from those who can afford it. From the looks of him, he's got plenty more. He's a banker. My favorite kind of customer. Get in, my friend. I don't bother working people. Get going. Get. Get, baby. Now, you say he didn't bother Mr. Parker or the driver, hmm? No. Says he only robs the rich. Marshal, I'm willing to put up a reward for this man. No, that won't be necessary, Mr. Sloan. We'll catch him if we can. Well, I certainly hope you do. Sound familiar? Yeah, Henry Harrison Hammer. Down Crawfordville way. Yeah? The imitation Jesse James. Henry Harrison Hammer. There we are. 23 arrests, 
For armed robbery, no convictions because of lack of evidence. Mm, because he robs the rich and spares the poor, just like Robin Hood. Oh, no, there's a difference. You know, Robin Hood used to steal from his rich enemies to give to his poor friends. This one robs just to help himself. Well, what do you mean? Well, it's my opinion that a thief will steal from anybody, rich or poor. Now, Mr. Hammer's reputation has been built carefully and with a purpose. Under the right circumstances, he'd rob a poor man, too. Bottle your best. Check these for me, will you, please? into custody, sir. On what charge? Suspicion of armed robbery. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Do I look like a robber? Well, you do to Mr. Sloan. Let's go. Hammer. Occupation? Businessman. Six hundred and seventy-seven dollars. And eighty cents. You don't happen to have a watch? No, I don't have a watch. Time means very little to me. It's pretty obvious he sold it someplace for about fifty dollars. That watch was worth over two hundred. I've never seen this little man in my life, Marshal. What kind of a town is this, where a fat banker can accuse a complete stranger of robbery? How'd you know he was a banker, Mr. Hammond? Just a guess, Marshal. Hmm. Well, the court will convene at noon tomorrow. I'll make him comfortable in the meantime. Hmm? Yes, sir. This way. He's the man. What nerve, making no attempt to disguise himself. He does have nerve, and with good reason. He's had 23 arrests and no convictions. Well, how can that be? Lack of evidence. I'll see you in court tomorrow, sir. Well, you certainly will. And then he said to the stagecoach driver, I don't bother working people. Thank you, Mr. Sloan. Will the prisoner please stand? Set the man. It is. Your Honor, this man is known to every law officer from Coffeyville North. He's a dangerous criminal, but he's never been convicted of a crime. But today, I think we have the witnesses that will convict him. I'd like to call Mr. Sam Landale to the stand. Thank you, Mr. Sloan. Yes. Raise your right hand. He's going to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Yes, sir. Sit down. Now, Mr. Landale, were you the driver of the regular stagecoach run the afternoon of August 25th? Yep. With Mr. Sloan and Mr. Limestone Parker as passengers? Yep. Would you recognize the man who held up the stage? I don't know about that. Will the prisoner rise? Is that the man? I can't rightly say. <laughs> now, Mr. Landale, Mr. Sloan testified that the robber spoke to you. Might be he did. What did he say? Well, I can't rightly remember. I was uh, busy holding the horses. All right. Your Honor, will you please instruct the prisoner to say the words, I don't bother working people? Mr. Hammer, you will repeat those words. I don't bother working people. Now, does that sound like the voice of the man that robbed your stage? 
I just can't rightly say. <laughs> You're obstructing justice, Mr. Landale, and I'm warning you that... Marshal Lamb! You know better than that. Thank you, Mr. Landale. Will Mr. Limestone Parker please take the stand? Raise your right hand. It's what it tells the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I always do, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Parker. Now, will you please tell the court exactly what happened? Uh, well, sir, when this robber stopped the stagecoach and he ordered Mr. Sloan, the banker, and me to get out, then quicker than a flash, he found Mr. Sloan's fat wallet and his fancy gold watch. And he took them. <laughs> Did he take anything from you? No. All I had was a little change for beans and bacon. And would you recognize this robber if you saw him again? I sure would. Will the prisoner please rise? Is that the man? No, sir. The robber was short and fat. <laughs> I'm Stone Parker. You're a liar. You know very well this man stole my money. Order! Marshal Earp, in view of the conflicting testimony, there's nothing I can do but free the accused. Case dismissed for lack of evidence. Your Honor, because this man supposedly robs only the rich, the people he leaves alone refuse to testify against him. Now, in my opinion... The case dismissed! Thanks kindly, Marshal. Sign this receipt. The horse is outside, all saddled. It's also kind of you, Marshal. But I don't think I'll be needing him for a while. Yes, you will. You'll leave in town. Eventually, Marshal. Eventually. It's a nice town you have. Wonderful law enforcement. Man can feel safe here. The minute Mr. Hammer steps out of line, I want to hear about it. Right. Call. Well, now, three queens. I'm afraid I have you beaten again, my friend. Three aces. Drinks for all, bartender. Henry Hammer shares his good fortune. You mean he's won every hand? Oh, he might have lost a few. He's winning the big ones. Without cheating. Sure, he's not playing with kids, you know. How much you figure he's won tonight? Mm, four or five hundred dollars. He just plays his cards right. Yeah, plus the six thirty or so he stole from Mr. Sloan. He's won about another thousand since he's been here. Well, so long as he's got money, he won't make a move. But it can't last forever. Isn't it possible you're wrong about Hammer Wyatt? It's possible, but doubtful. You just keep watching. All right. Marshal Earth. Why, you were the first person I intended to look up. Are you here on business? Yes, sir. I am now representing a line of the finest kitchenware in the country. Could I uh, interest you in some kitchenware, Marshal? <laughs> well, I'm afraid not, Mr. Wilson. Oh, then you're not married yet. Uh, no, sir, not yet. You should be. It's a wonderful life. Gives a man roots, you know. Quite different from the life I used to lead, remember? <laughs> I'll never forget. You know, I'd say uh, you were one of the most dishonest gamblers I ever met. Do you know I haven't touched a deck of cards since Wichita? No. And I've never properly thanked you. I would have been killed, Marshal, if you hadn't intervened, and justifiably, too, I was cheating. Well, I'm, uh, I'm glad it turned out to be a good life for you, Mr. Wilson. I hope I can repay you someday. Say, as a starter, how about having supper with me tonight? Well, I'd be glad to, Mr. Wilson. Fine. Where's a good place to eat? 
Well, let's see. Uh, well, how about the Alhambra? Say, uh, 8 o'clock? Good. See you then. Right, sir. Good. Good evening, gentlemen. Small drink before we start the game? Good evening, Marshal. How are you tonight? Offhand, I'd say that man was no friend, Marshal. You're right. Who is he? His name is Henry Harrison Hammer. Did you ever hear of him? I have, but I've forgotten him. What connection? Tell me about him. Let's wait till later in my office. Let's eat our dinner in peace, huh? Mm -hmm. That's been going on for a whole week. He's been winning steadily. Well, I just don't understand people like that driver in Limestone. What could he accomplish by lying in court? It tickles him to see Mr. Hammer get away with robbing a banker. And you believe he's just as much a danger to the poor as the rich, huh? I think he'd steal from anybody. The only way that could be proved would be if Mr. Hammer were broke, if he lost every dime he had. Yeah, I know. There's very little chance of that happening. Marshal, I see a golden opportunity to repay my great debt to you. Oh, no, Mr. Wilson, I can't let you do that. Can't stop a man from playing cards, Marshal. But you just told me yourself you haven't gambled in years. I proved to myself I don't have to gamble. I promise I'll never do it again after tonight. Like I told you, he's lucky. Please, Marshal, this is Dusty Wilson you're talking to. To quote you, one of the most dishonest gamblers I ever met. <laughs> Don't worry, Marshal. I bet ten dollars. I'll just see that. Cards? Two. I, uh, I think I'll just play these. Check. Check, huh? That'll just cost you fifty dollars, Mr. Hammer. Fifty. I never saw such luck in my life. Would you care to continue tomorrow, sir? Perhaps your luck will change. Now, give me the card. Keep an eye on it. Well, he cleaned out Mr. Hammerwhite. Yes, sir, Marshal. These old hands have never lost their charm. <laughs> Say, I was watching you pretty close. I never saw you cheat, did you? Oh, please, no professional secrets. There's almost $1,500 there. Mr. Wilson, you're a genius, and I want to thank you. Oh, no trouble at all, Marshal. Good day. Say, wait a minute. Mr. Hammer is what I think he is. You're going to be the first victim. We both live in the same hotel. I don't want to use you as bait, Mr. Wilson. You've already done enough for us, and... Well, I, uh... I think you'll find ourselves most comfortable. All right, but, uh... Not a word of this to my family, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. Now, Hammer's only other source of quick money. He'll be the bank or the stagecoach. I want you to place three deputies in the bank. All right. Now, you said the stagecoach. There's not always someone with money riding there. I know. Mr. Sloan will make a ship in the bank funds to Wichita on the afternoon stage. At least I want you to spread that rumor around. Now, you watch Hammer yourself. If he leaves town, you follow him. Where are you going to be? I'll be inside the stagecoach. Come on, I'll make you comfortable. Money. It's inside. Climb down. Open the door. Drop that gun, Hammer. One move and your driver's a dead man. Ah, no money box, I see. A nice trick if you got away with it, Herb. Remember, this man dies if you don't stay put. All right, close the door. Get back up there. All right, Wyatt. Yeah, 
what took you so long? He's got a fast horse. He got away from me. Keep on his trail. I'll be with you in a minute. Hey, come on. Come on, give me a hand with the lead horse. He's headed up toward Crow Hill. <sighs> That's a rough climb. Any other cabins up there besides Limestone Parkers? Not that I know of. Let's go. You sure nobody can get up here without us hearing them? <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> you can hear anybody coming a quarter of a mile away. Good. Got a nice, comfortable little place, Limestone. Yeah, and you're welcome to hide out here just as long as you like. Henry, <laughs> you know, uh, it ain't every day that I have a celebrity visiting me. <laughs> well, there's the cabin. The track's heading right for it. Don't see any other way to get there without making a racket. Let's move. Get in here, quick. I'll handle everything. up here all alone, uh, Lamston? Uh, yes, sir. I'm always alone. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody been by here in the last couple of hours? No, sir. Not a soul, Marshal. Are you aware that helping a uh, criminal to escape is a serious offense? Oh, sure. I know that, Marshal. Well, I'm sorry to have troubled you. Oh, it's no trouble at all, Marshal. Just uh, drop by any time. <laughs> Thank you. He's gone. Don't you, it's me. Thanks, old friend. <laughs> you know, I ain't had such a laugh since that day in court. You know, when that old banker yelled at me, <laughs> I was fit to bust. You don't like bankers much, do you? No, I don't trust them neither. I feel the same way. I figure if a man can't take care of his money, he don't deserve to have it. That's right. Now, you take me, for instance. I'm a thrifty man. I don't have much, but I don't need much. <laughs> My life saving is just $320. <laughs> you think I'd put that in that old man Sloan's bank? No, sir. Where is it, Limestone? I... Why? Uh, you don't want my money, Henry. Oh, yes, I do. Now get it. And no tricks. Oh, Henry. <laughs> All right, now step back. I must be dreaming. I thought you said you only stole from the rich. Nobody ever told them differently. And nobody will. Especially you. Oh, now, please, please, I, I won't tell. You might. <laughs> Marshal, he was going to kill me. I know that, Limestone. What do you think about testifying against him now? Yes, sir. Thank you, Hal. Patch him up. You know, you ought to keep that money in the bank. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I sure am glad you came back, Marshal. What made you do it? 
You? You had the same twinkle in your eye when you lied on the witness stand. Oh, I, I shouldn't have done it. I shouldn't have done it. Mr. Sloan, I have your money right here. But you said he was stone broke when you arrested him. Uh, well, let's say he was relieved of his money by a method that uh, I can't discuss. Uh, I think you had $630. I think you'll find it there in that package. How much would you say your watch was worth? But there's a lot left. Was that all from Hammer? Every nickel. And the school fund can use it quite nicely. Uh, Mr. Wilson has refused any uh, fee for his services. Uh, school fund, eh? Well, why don't you keep that for the fund, Markland? Here, here. Add this to it. Well, thank you very much. Not a bad fellow. <laughs> well, he cleaned up the country, the old Wild West country. He made law and order prevail. And none can deny it, the legend of Wyatt forever will live on the trail. Cảm ơn mọi người đã theo dõi video của mình. À, xin chào.